Welcome back to AWS Deep Racer TV News. Blaine Sundred here with race results, highlights, and up to the minute news regarding the AWS Deep Racer League this month. With only two months to go in the AWS Deep Racer League 2020, August sent another 11 competitors onto the championships this November. Eager to see who's moving on this month? Check the timing in the description below to skip ahead, but if you do, you'll miss out on great tips on saving money in the console while training podium-worthy models with our pit crew expert, Tim O'Brien. At the end of July, AWS Deep Racer introduced new pricing and billing by moving from individual service charges to a simple lower cost flat fee model. The flat fee model means you now will only see charges on your billing statement from AWS Deep Racer, making it easier to manage alongside all of your other AWS workloads, as well as decipher how you are budgeting your Deep Racer spends to achieve optimal cost to performance efficiency. In addition to these savings, Tim O'Brien will walk us through his favorite tips for getting the most bang for your buck on Deep Racer. Tim, thanks for joining us. I'm looking to dive in and get more serious about my model training on Deep Racer, but I'm a little apprehensive about how to keep costs down. What can I do in training to ensure I'm being efficient? Thanks for inviting me on, Blaine. And yes, there are a number of ways you can do to improve your spend with training alone. The first and the biggest tip is don't overtrain. More isn't always better and often can be much worse. Training longer than necessary in any kind of machine learning leads to overfitting, which means a model doesn't generalize well to any kind of difference in conditions. This is especially detrimental when translating from the simulated environment to the real environment, or what we call the virtual and the physical. For example, uh, reInvent 2019, I created 16 different models of varying sophistication for a Deep Racer Classic, you know, the, the model with just a single camera lens up front. These models range from the very simple all wheels on track models to very sophisticated ones involving waypoints and trigonometry. I trained each of these models for one, two, three, four, up to eight hours. So you can imagine a matrix of 16 by eight. And what I discovered was that I got the best results around two hours. Training more didn't lead to better convergence, only worse times, wasted training time, and wasted money. Okay, so that's very interesting. So. Are you saying that two hours is the magic number for reaching convergence across the board? Well, not necessarily. The complexity of the environment, the number of parameters, the number of inputs will impact the time that your model needs to reach convergence. When I first experiment with a new reward function, I'll often train for just a short period of time, such as 15 or maybe 30 minutes, because I want to see the output of that reward graph go up. I want to see my progress go up. And if I don't see it, then I'll just stop the training. I'll figure out what's wrong with my reward model. After a short bit of training, if I see that reward result and the percentage completion increase, I'll further train that model using a longer period of time. Once I get a decent model, rather than just continuing to train indefinitely, I'll conduct a certain amount of log analysis. And from that, I can determine where my model is less than optimal. I'll then work directly on either modifying the reward function or optimizing results using hyperparameter optimization. Nice. Very cool. I heard that Formula One champion Ray G just published a great blog on his methods for offline log analysis. And by the way, for those looking to learn more, check out the link in the description. But Tim, here's a new question. Will cloning my existing model help me cut down on future training time? Well, it can. Cloning a model is a type of transfer learning in the machine learning world. And what happens is you're making a deep copy of that neural network, the entire deep racer convolutional neural network, including all of the nodes, the weights, the input and the output layers, which is the action space. The shape of that neural network is then fixed, and that also means the action space is fixed. This would allow you to avoid some amount of training time because that CNN from the beginning would have weights set to random, and this could potentially save you a considerable amount of training time. One of the things you can imagine is if you start with a model with a pretty large uh, learning rate, you could start and then clone the model later on and reduce the learning rate to a lower value for subsequent training, and that could lead to somewhat better models. However, you have to be careful. If you radically change the reward function, the clone model might not converge and you'd be wasting training time and money. Okay. Um, so 
cloning should be iterative unless I want to end up with a real Frankenstein's model. <laughs> uh, yeah, you could say that. What's that? Um, okay. <laughs> anyway, these sound like great tips for making the most of my training. But I'm also worried I may spin up too many jobs and lose track of my spends as I test out all of your tips. How can I save myself from any unwanted surprises? Well, one of my favorite mechanisms is to use the billing and cost management dashboard in the console. You can set a budget for a given service such as DeepRacer. Using the budget service, you can create an alarm that will cause an email to be sent over to you when you reach a certain percentage of your periodic budget. So, for example, if you had a budget of $100 a month, when you reach 75%, you'd get an email, thereby cautioning you and allowing you to make adjustments to your spend. That is fantastic. I'm looking forward to implementing these into my workflows and upping my Deep Racer skills. Now, for more tips from Tim, check out his Deep Racer presentation on Pluralsight at the link below. All right, race fans, let's shift right into Summit Online race results for August. The top four in time trial and top four in head to head each qualified for the championships, while the top 20 from each division win 400 US dollars in prizes. Another month on the reInvent Speedway for the Summit Online circuit, with four new participants making the cut Oscar IVE Cloud, Kevin S, Swashes, and Garage ISEP all lay down impressive results with less than a second separating their times. Each racer managed to lay down consistent laps in sub 10 second timings. Looking back to the 2019 championships, only a handful of racers managed to navigate the same track in single digits throughout the tournament. Sub 10 seconds seems to be the new normal, and it's clear that in 2020, participants are really taking Deep Racer to a new level and testing the theoretical limitations of their models. Over in the head-to-head -head division, in previous months, a podium finish has evaded these racers, while in August, they were able to evade the bots and break through for a chance at the championships. Nalbaum M.E., YMZK Denso, Utom Denso, and Matt. Team Denso has really cranked up the heat on the back half of 2020 with a number of top competitors qualifying through the 2020 Summit Circuit. The clock is ticking. If you haven't topped the leaderboards yet, there's still one month to go in the Summit Online races. We're awarding 16 racers this month in the Summit Online circuit and 80 chances to win prizes worth $400. In addition, we're awarding every participant that submits to the Summit Online leaderboard a one-time $30 US dollar AWS credit to help with more training. For more details, go to awsdeepracerleague.com. Start racing today. The August qualifier races for the AWS Deep Racer League virtual circuit take place on the all new Yun Speedway. Yun is the Chinese word for cloud. The Yun Speedway is a broad loop with constant cornering, void of any major straightaways. Models will need to carry speed through turns to lay down a fast lap and head-to-head -head models will need to search for inside and outside passing opportunities through various bends to find a way through. In time trial, F Racer takes the number one slot with 54.023 seconds. YH10, Uncle GK DBS, Heikal DBS, and Mars earn prizes to round out the top five. Meanwhile, in object avoidance, Jonathan Racer scores a win with 105.01. That leaves second prize winners Ishizakai SEC, Scarlet, Jaisol Nakase, and Trinity all in the hunt for yet another month. Their object avoidance skills are sure to come in handy if they pick up the pace and earn their way to the finals. And then there was the virtual circuit head to head. The bracket of 32 has defeated many a first place qualifier, and when it comes to crunch time, rewards well-rounded models for their stability. It's my favorite race of the month because models that have overtrained against bots or built sheerly for speed can fall apart when faced with an unpredictable adversary to share the track with. It's anybody's race, so let's see who it will be in August. 
Japan is showing in full force, no doubt testing their models as they gear up for showdowns in the September Summit Online Japan race. Competitors from Denso, DMP, and SEC face off against developers from DBS and JPMC, while regulars like Think, Dark Chocolate, and Speed Force try for another win. Cheng Huang from DBS enters in the number one spot, but is ousted in round two by 16 seed Sasagawa from SEC. Sasagawa falls to nine seed Deepak DPK in the quarters, who in turn is eliminated in the semis by five seed Meyer Madnani. What a turn for the path of the top finisher. In the other half of the brackets, Ishizaki from SEC stops Adam H in round one, before going on to end the bids of Matt and Dark Chocolate in short order. The 19 seed Ishizaki quickly finds themselves locked in the finals against five seed Meyer Madnani. Right off the line, both models seem to struggle to find a groove with multiple resets headed through turn two. Ishizaki pulls away to a healthy lead halfway through lap one, but a few off tracks and Meyer Madnani is right back on their tail. It's close through two, but Ishizaki continues to struggle while Meyer Magnati manages to stay on course to create some breathing room. Ishizaki just can't make up the ground, finishing with 23 resets to Meyer Magnati's 13, and Meyer Magnati captures the win. Catch us next month as we gear up for the reInvent Championships and reward our September Virtual Circuits fastest. For Deep Racer TV News, I'm Blaine Sundry.